Hi all, I have a very instructive, interesting game to show you from the TSAC Season 18 Super Final. So in round 25, Leela was playing white against Stockfish. Let's have a look at this game, E4. We have the Kara Khan is the setting for this game. We have Knight C3, D5, and now Knight F3, the two knights uh, variation, Knight F6. Fisher had toyed with this for a little bit. He had a draw against Petrosian which is actually a four queens game, which reached over 1 million views on YouTube on, on the King's Crusher channel. I think I went totally overboard with all the variations in that game, <laughs> which is probably why it, it, it got over a million views. Uh, but anyway, check that out if you want. But uh, okay, so E5 here, Knight E4. We have Knight E2, so shying away uh, from that Knight, being able to kick this Knight at some point. Queen B6. But this immediately puts a question to f2, leveraging that knight. So white has to do something about f2. d4 is played, e6. And now this this is really quite an annoying knight. It's challenge of knight g3. And we have c5 as if black's trying to uh, play like a you know French defense style. I mean, with e6, it has kind of transposed into what seems to be a French defense style position. And Stockfish generally doesn't do too well in those uh, positions. Generally speaking, it hasn't done well versus Leela in particular. We have Bishop d3. And now Knight takes g3. This is a really interesting crossroads here. In Chess Base Live Book, uh, most masters, it seems, most master games, uh, the poll here, if it's like a virtual vo voting poll, they vote to take h takes g rather than f takes. How would you take it? Uh, if you want to leave a comment there, would you take more, would you say principally towards the center? Would you take away from the center? That's a very interesting question, I felt. The stats there, in terms of the current voting, it's 56 for taking towards the center. And it includes the likes of Magnus Carlsen voting with H takes G3 here. But we've got MVL playing the more kind of dynamically aggressive F takes, as if the F file might be significant. So this is literally a case of swings and roundabouts. The, the follow-up, the continuation is to justify your choice. The actual question might be silly if you don't really know the exact, you know, the follow-ups you're going to use. In this book, we're given F takes G3. They're forced to investigate F takes G3. So is this going to be good or bad for white? On H takes G3, uh, C takes, there was uh, an online game with not knight takes d4 that's that's uh that is technically possible knight takes d4 because if it takes there's bishop b5 check uh here uh my analysis technical analysis gives this as about an even position but there is actually a game of magnus carlson here with the move g4 uh yeah so um this is really uh, interesting. So um, here, instead of knight takes d4, playing g4. But I don't believe Magnus actually uh, against Grischuk. Uh, it was in the uh, ICC International. This, this could have been an online game. Magnus actually had a seemingly quite miserable position here. I think Grischuk was actually doing very, very well, but managed to lose it in the end. But it wasn't really as a result of the opening. Black was had a really aggressive, active position for quite some way in that. So that isn't a great vindication of H takes G3, the way that was played, I felt. So F takes here, we have C takes D4. So it's a kind of possessional <laughs> pawn sacrifice. It is dub two, you know, it's double pawns, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's got all the pawns. That extinguishes a bit the you know the diagonal pressure. If black had maintained the tension with uh, knight c6, perhaps white castles. And this position, it seems we can see the dynamic bite on f7 immediately here. This dynamic upside. So if knight d8, in fact, believe it or not, the crude looking queen f3 is is rather difficult for black to do anything about here. Uh, if c4, knight takes f7, and white's really crashing through with an advantage. So it is pretty dangerous, this f file, in this particular situation. Uh, if you want to, you know, there's actually a stack exchange um, question, you know, when should you take 
towards the center. I mean, I generally, I think because I suffered a bad loss once in the Trompovsky where I took away from the center, I weakened the diagonal. But in the circumstances of that position, it wasn't just weakening e3, the opponent had a dark square bishop I didn't have. So it's the real, it's really the details of the possession. Here, you know, white's actually, it's got the dark square bishop, it doesn't really matter about this diagonal even at the moment. And we've got this dynamic pressure on the f file. So it, it, the swings and roundabouts and the continuations, the follow ups, uh, to really determine what's going on here. So here uh, we see, yeah, C takes d4 and white castles, knight c6. And here there's another kind of virtual interesting vote before we leave, you know, over the, the over the board world. In the over the board world, there's an 8 to 1 kind of vote for queen e2 here. This is, I felt this is quite interesting as well. In this game, we have there is one game in the, in the over the board world. Someone, I think less less than twenty three hundred. He played queen e one. Um, so this is this is actually this path queen e one. This has got actually very interesting perks to it on both sides of the board. You can imagine sometimes uh, it's hitting a pawn on a five. Sometimes the queen's going to uh, h four or going to g3 to support e5, it can bounce on both sides of the board. So in a way, it's it's a very, very interesting um, difference here, queen e1 uh, to queen e2. On queen e2, uh, for example, this is a choice of Maxim Vachia Le Grave. Uh, there's a game he had like this, where uh, here, bishop d2, sorry, bishop b2, knight b5, Queen f2, and here he had a very very quick online win against Wei uh, Yi uh, when Black castled here after a4. <laughs> there's a disaster. First of all, if Knight c3 takes and there's that nasty pin, but here bang, Bishop takes d4 and Black had to resign. So that was you know Vachia Grav makes MVL against uh, Wei Yi. Uh, that was a disaster. Nakamura sidestepped that disaster with Queen C7 here, so letting the knight, you know, potentially use uh, A7 or C3 without disaster, and that game actually ended in uh, a draw later at move 59. So that was an interesting uh, stem game as well. So MVL has, has some experience in this F file dynamic kind of position. Uh, so he's not, you know, rule based. I must capture <laughs> capture towards the center. It's, a, it's just a general guidance rule. Uh, but here, yeah, Queen E two is the more popular move. But here we see Queen E one favored by Leela. So that's kind of interesting. Sidestepping most of the uh, human choices for Queen E two, we have Bishop E seven. Uh, here, H uh, six has been seen before. This is the last stem game of that. The guy I mentioned, these two two nine eight against the twenty three twenty three. It was just, I think, it's just an online game. Anyway, he managed to win eventually. With sorry, Black managed to win, getting a good position by castling queenside. Black managed to win here, and there was some pressure, and Black got an attack. Yeah, it can, it can be quite dangerous. Black eventually uh, managed to win that. But uh, okay, we have Bishop e seven, and now we departed from all the the stem games of interest. Uh, we have knight g5. So this really shows the dynamic potential immediately of the f file and forces black into a concession. Stockfish, by the way, really during this game, it was like going up a, a step ladder. It really hated its position just more and more and more in this game, if you look at the evaluation shifts. Uh, so here it's it's having to make a concession of giving up the dark square bishop, it seems. If uh, black castles, then there is time for bishop takes h7. This diagonal check is not a big deal. The bishop just goes back there. And even there's, there's a great way to play it like this, which is quite crushing. For example, knight f6. And there's a crushing attack like this, for example, where black's going to get mated. So yeah, black cannot afford to sacrifice the h pawn. That's just ridiculous. I know, but for fun, I'll show you that. So bishop takes g5, h6. The bishop goes back. Bishop d7. Now I have I had a question. You know, what about g5 here? Is that a useful forcing move? This is more positional, like downside. After bishop d2, uh, we see, for example, well, in this example, here, 
we see that maybe you know there's a problem later with the f6 square like this and the dark squares are generally very weak for black of course and black could end up losing material on those dark squares uh, those dark square pawns are just there for picking up so okay maybe that's why possibly why you know g5 does weaken that f6 so for the moment bishop d7 was played and now we have h4 clamping down anyway on black's potential g5 and this is not the first time they kind of made a move as if <laughs> to encourage the opponent to regret not playing the forcing move it's not the first time in this game actually uh, a6 a4 and we have rook f8 if queen takes b2 here there is a little bit of a backfire rook b1 and taking uh why it's just too active here it seems even if the a4 pawn goes uh, this dark square bishop is running rampant. White's really controlling the position here. The king's in trouble. The rook's in trouble. The rooks just look very, very dumb here. The f file looks still dangerous. It's much better for white. So uh, we have rook f8. Uh, also, sorry, let me just show you as well. If castling queenside, then bishop d2. You might think, well, why wasn't castling queenside an option? The thing is, it this battery here, this queen on e1 has a magnificent perk to it in the form of b4 because actually it's rather unfortunate that casting queenside the rooks on d8 and we have this skewing diagonal you can see that b5 and bishop a5 skewers queen and rook so queen c7 b5 and this i mean it's it's big concessions to force b6 and then bishop d6 and it's just you know disaster scenarios uh so yeah so rook f8 so being cagey about castling queenside uh, we have rook c1 and now a5 again being cagey about castling queenside i think stockfish is uh terrified <laughs> well electronically terrified whatever that is low, low evaluations if castling queenside what is the horror it seems bishop d2 and if a5 here you might think doesn't a5 put an end to things it turns out bishop b5 is is actually a key move to undermine a5 as you might expect if check taking this is just going to be really unpleasant for example like this so yeah this is a really unfortunate diagonal this queen and, and rook over there so we see uh, a5 here not castling queenside king h2 and we see queen c7 and now h5 so clamping down fix it's starting to fix down the mobility of the black pawns yeah it's like black is getting positionally done over you know b5 is under white's control the dark squares are weak for black this is a much more miserable french defense position than you might expect rook h8 if yeah stockfish is resorting to plan this moves it seems with rook h8 if castling queen side here bishop b5 and then here taking on c6 and then bishop d2 even in this scenario with bishop d2 with the queen on e1 we can see a massive benefit with b4 and this is not very nice at all the dark square bishop making inroads there onto d6 uh so yeah we have rook h8 bit of planless play queen f2 king f8 uh, yeah, if knight takes e5, then the f file raf, you know, just taking queen takes f7. And here, bishop b5 would be mega strong. There's no way black's going to survive this position. Uh, and if queen c7, then gain a tempo with queen takes and then get a magnificent pin with rook f7. That's winning for white. So uh, we have king f8. And now king g1. You might think, oh, hold on, isn't there an F7 issue? If bishop takes, it can be ignored, you know, maybe with bishop e8. And uh, here, if bishop takes, this looks a, like a really dangerous continuation, but it seems black might have sufficient resource to handle things like this, for example. So a bit scary, but, you know, it seems as though that's possible. If uh, g takes, you know, queen takes is make that. So, But there is that resource um uh, bishop e8 yep and um otherwise you know the h pawn is it's unfortunate so um okay so king g1 bishop e8 now and now g4 so we see that actually these double pawns this this one moving it's kind of it's not even 
about the F file, if there's a philosophical point here about capturing wave from the center, it really depends on the follow-ups. And these double pawns, the follow-up in terms of what you do with that frontal double pawn, it seems to be creating more dark square pressure and weaknesses on dark squares potentially if G5 is pushed. Huge problems. The king, I mean, sitting on the F file is obviously a major upside here in this particular dramatic example of capturing away from the center. We've got, you know, like a penalty situation. The king's just on the F file as the big target. King G8, we have Queen H4. Rook C8, and now here actually in playing Rook C8, if you look at the evaluation shifts, after Stockfish played Rook C8, it went from 1.16 for white to 2.46, so it became a bit depressed, it seems, about its position when it played Rook C8. Uh, if Knight takes E5 instead, then Queen G3, so this is a nasty pin, and here, this is a very nasty pin on E5, and in fact, for example here rook takes e5 this exchange sack in this situation with the rooks kind of disconnected uh, is a pretty vivid example of a really dynamic exchange sack where there's big king safety issues like this for example and if white doesn't want to if black doesn't want to give up the queen so say bishop takes then bishop g6 and we're looking at things like bishop f7 and queen d3 it's slicing the king so if that stop that then rook f7 and then here, you know, this again wins, you know, the queen at least. White's much better. So there's no taking on e5, it seems. This is just a poison pawn. So we have this kind of waiting move, depressed waiting move, rook c8. g5, yeah, the double pawns are being undoubled. And white's in, a, in the process of making use of this dynamic f file pressure to reshape things and to create new weaknesses for black. With h takes, so undoubling white's pawns, queen takes, and now big threat of h6 sometimes. Sometimes uh, when when the queen gets out of the way, we have knight b4, and now queen g4. So looking at things like h6 now, b6 is played. If bishop takes a4 here, then h6. You see that the bishop taking on a4, it's greedy, but it also weakens. It's got a weakness for the last move. It weakens g6, and that echoes here. Well, in this line, that's a disaster. But if black played g6 here, then we just snap that off. Bishop takes, and that's a total disaster. Yeah, it's uh, so there's no there's no affordance for playing bishop takes a4 here. Uh, so after you know b6, it seems you know Leela made <laughs> as if there was a regret for not taking the ball. So this thing, he played b3. So the second time in this game, and those he was playing these moves that you might have questioned if if Black had the option. It's, it's taken away anyway. B3, just protecting a4 calmly, while still threatening things like h6 now. So we we see queen d7, and here on playing this move, Stockfish this waiting move, Stockfish got even more depressed. Going the evaluation went from 2.34 for White to 4.53 that's quite a significant shift in one move queen e7 and we have here bishop d2 so not h6 immediately but funny enough bishop d2 it seems to have the intent of taking this out and then believe it or not playing rook f6 you might have felt the lead up would have been h6 but sometimes there's a totally different ball game here to what you might think uh, of just playing for h6 uh yeah uh the bishop takes b4 and rook f6 ball game instead if h6 here if we didn't want to waste time with bishop d2 g6 here this position it is good for white but it's it's not that brilliant you know maybe there's going to be a struggle after but bishop d2 this is creating the idea that, that you know the f6 rook outpost here is going to be pretty devastating uh, we have uh, knight takes d3. If rook c7, then bishop takes b4. Let's look at this ball game with rook f6. White can double. And here, queen g g5. Black seems to be rather helpless here against things like rook g6 and h6 in general. So here, there's rook takes e6, for example. So that pin pawn. Um, but, you know, what does is, what is black actually uh, do here? Uh, here, uh, in, that was on rook c7, but let's have a look at rook d8 as an example. 
taking and then rook f6. Uh, so the rooks double, and for example, rook g6. Yeah, and black can only temporarily it just loses that pawn because if there's rook h7 here, uh, white just nudges that rook away with with rook g5. The effect of attacking the rook and then takes on g7. So this whole f file and g file and h pawn, it's it's just devastating stuff here. As you can see, so yeah, a marvelous idea of this bishop retreat, just to take here, install the rooks, and and they work beautifully on the f and g files. Amazing stuff. So anyway, so knight takes d3 was played by Stockfish, and we have this intermediate move threatening queen takes g7 mate. If c takes, then rook takes. This this position with h6 is also nice for white. Uh, but h6 may be even more accurate, rook h7, c takes, rook c5. We have bishop g5. This rook has a miserable existence right now. Rook c3, bishop f6, g6. So a form pawn, the dreaded form pawn, bishop g7. Yes, this rook is not the most happy rook in the history of chess on h7. We have queen d8. Uh, if rook takes d3 here, in fact, there's the fun move. Can you spot it? What white plays in this position? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, white to play here, what would you play here? Okay. Queen takes g6. Yeah, because if f takes, there's that chat mate. Uh, so if f5 here, then queen f6 threatens queen f8. And here, this this is just horrendous for black. Uh, so, if instead of rook takes d3, uh, so queen e8 was was played. If instead uh, rook takes g7 again, white's the exchange up and should be doing very well here, extremely well. In fact, like mating the black king, for example. So uh, we have queen d8, and now rook cd1, queen e7. Rook f6, rook h8, rook f3, king h7, bishop f6. And now taking finally the exchange, and now queen g5. The damage has really been done. This bishop is also a silly piece in this French defense, you know, pawn structure. A lot of these pawns on light squares. It's a silly piece here. And the queen is also this horrible infiltration possibility of e7 or d8. We have rook c7 fending against queen e7, but not queen d8. Rook d7, queen b8. And the point is here that black's really tied down. If white gets two moves, then rook c1 to c8 is a very nasty pin. So we have f5 in desperation, pure desperation. If queen g8 just put this on the board, you know, rook c1, rook c8. And here it's, you know, devastation like rook takes f7. And that's checkmate to the queen, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, because if queen takes, we just take that on. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the kind of thing that's going on here. These potentially really nasty pins and batteries. Pins and batteries. So f5, e takes, bishop f7. We have queen takes b6, queen d8. And now queen takes d4. It's a mopping up job. It's the exchange up. There's not too much, really, that Lila needs to do. So these two pawns are pretty vulnerable, a5 and e5. So e5 is targeted at the expense of maybe f6. It doesn't matter about that exchange of kind of prisoner there. But a5 is taken on route to winning e5. And yeah, it's it's all over basically. b3 is, is taken to gain a tempo. I mean, allowed to be taken to gain a tempo. Uh, so here it's with the past outside a pawn as well now. Black's overloaded. So here, white can build up now on the focal point e7 square by playing rook e1, rook f e1, and rook e7 if given enough time. Bishop f7. Here, this is another desperate move in the circumstance. The game ended here. If it continued, so after g5, yeah, Stockfish kind of resigned. If queen g4, we can see that queen takes g5, so that was threatening mate on g7. It's the exchange up and it's crumbling for black. Even if 
there's a bit of excitement on G2, you know, why it's crashing through basically. Yeah, so I'll take you to the game end position. Uh, so I thought actually this is quite an interesting game. Philosophical points about capturing away from the center it really depends on the position, the follow ups. And, uh, you know, the case of the double pawns. Sometimes, you know, in the London system, I've had double pawns. I use the H file, but here, you know, the F file, MVL seems to be a fan of F takes for the F file. He's had some really fun games there. And here, yeah, it seems as though Stockfish really vindicated every step of the way. F takes G3. Technically, it just got more and more depressed about its position. The other interesting point, you know, the natural Queenie 2 versus Queenie 1. Queenie 1, as Lila showed, really had gigantic bites on both sides of the board. There were numerous cases of bishop b5 taking and then b4 or bishop takes a5 with that battery that set up with queen e1. So yeah, there are these kind of slightly anti sort of human, not not human in non-intuitive, you know, two key things taking away from the center that the queen e1 versus the queen e2. L later it seems, uh, you know, black was getting just more and more depressed by its position. Uh, and it resulted in a loss of the exchange over there. It, it just dared not castle queen side, but on the king side, you know, this rook was not very happy. Ended up being lost and went the exchange up. A fascinating game, I thought. I hope you got something out of it as much as I did. I thought that was very, very interesting. Uh, if you want to challenge me for a game, kingscrusher.tv or bit.ly slash chassworld. There's also a suave chat forum at kingscrusher.tv slash discord. Come along. And there's game suggestion form in there, etc. The playlists uh bitly slash leader the chess or bitly slash stockfish chess. So the next round I'm gonna show you is stockfish playing the white side of this variation. Cliffhanger, let's see what stockfish did with the white side in the next instalment coming soon. Okay, comments, questions, like, share, subscribes with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks so much.